Hey everyone, today I'm going to take a look at Nobara 37. Nobara 37 is out as of January 6, 2023. And so I'm pretty excited about this. Uh, Nobara 37 follows along with Fedora 37. And Nobara it comes in three different flavors. It's the improved version, in my opinion, of Fedora because it's based on Fedora. So Nobara 37 comes in what's called the official spin, which is a modified version of the GNOME, where extensions are installed to make it a lot more civilized than just your regular GNOME. Unless you're a fan of the regular GNOME, then it's the other way around. And then we have the GNOME version, which is GNOME actually the way it's intended to be. So that's the second version. And then the third version is KDE. And that's the one I want to take a look at. So I'm going to grab the Nobara KDE and see how this is. The cool thing about Nobara is that it takes the shortcomings of Fedora, like the missing codecs and all that, and it's already got it in there. The kernel's been optimized for gaming. So if you're a gamer, that's a huge plus because it's really heavily oriented towards being very optimized and gaming efficient. So if you're a gamer, you'll love Nobara. No, Nobara. I can't pronounce it right. Oh, and also I want to apologize for the big rectangle around me having some green screen issues. So yeah, I decided to press on anyway. <laughs> but anyway, onward and upward. Let's grab a copy of this and load it in and see what it's like. Okay, here I am. I booted into the Nobara Live version 37 here, and I shrunk myself down a little bit and tried to mellow out a little bit. Rocky told me to take it easy on the caffeine, so I did. I only had 24 cups of coffee today instead of the usual 30. Whew. So, with that said, just kidding anyway. Let's take a look at this. So, here I am at the start screen, and I'm going to just arrow up to start Nobara because I don't want to test the media. Hit enter, and then we'll see what's going on. This should boot right into the live version of KDE. And there's our spinner showing up. So we're almost there. And personally, I think this is one of my favorite versions of the releases is the KDE version. Uh, I've never been a real huge GNOME fan, although GNOME has a lot of pluses too. But it's just not my cup of tea. So that's why I kind of wanted to go with the KDE. And I've actually run this. KDE version on my computer before as a daily and it's ran really great and I noticed we're running the Calamaries installer that's pretty cool the last time I reviewed Nobara they were still using the Fedora installer which is a lot more confusing if you're not used to it this is really simplified things having the, the Calamaries here so that's kind of a nice thing to see there I like that a notable improvement and actually, I think that was actually added in the 12.5 version. Nothing new there. So here I'm just going to type in my username and password. And then we'll just leave the checkboxes the way they are. Those are all good for me, the defaults. And then here's a summary of everything that we're going to do. And so it's going to format the, the drive and just erase everything on it and start fresh. So there we go. I'm going to let this run. I'm going to pause the video and I'll be right back when it's done. Okay, we're all done. That was easy peasy. And I don't know if I checked that or if that was already checked. But anyways, I'm going to hit done here. We'll do a reboot and see if all went well. Okay, and we're booting. That's always a good sign. I see the kernel here is 6.016. Nice. So quite a new kernel there. And like I was saying earlier, it's a modified kernel, too, that's optimized for gaming and graphics. And I think can even handle the NVIDIA cards better, too. Nice. And there's our login. So I'm just going to go ahead and log right in. And hit enter. And then with luck, we'll see a desktop instead of a bunch of flames and explosions. And here we are. All right. And there's our Nobara welcome screen and our post install cleanup. So that guy's going to run there and kind of do probably post install cleanup. And now I got this dialogue for video playback and recording enhancement. 
So yes, in other words, it wants a permission to install the, all the codecs and everything we need. So I'm going to, of course, say yes. So now it's grabbing H.264 codecs and other things from the repository, probably FFmpeg and all that good stuff. So now that's going to throw it in there. And that's, I'm assuming, coming from the Nobara repos. And I think uh, RPM Fusion is on here by default as well as as one of the repos, but it's all set up. And so here it looks like uh, our Yelm extender opened up, which is our updater and a really cool graphics there. I like the, the metadata refreshing repository graphics. That's really nice. So, so far, everything I'm seeing is polish and bling and beauty. Here's our updates they are all available. I'm just going to go up and check this little plus symbol here and that'll check all. And then once we got all that checked, I'm going to come over here and just select apply pending actions, the little button there. And then, so that'll bring up my confirmation window. I'm going to hit okay. And then I'm going to authenticate and then we should be good to go. Yes. So now it's downloading packages and we'll kind of let that updater do its thing. So that's part of the first steps here even though I kind of jumped the gun a little bit and manually ran that, but, and asking me if I want to import a key. Yes, I'm good with that. And we'll let that continue. And really like the graphic, it's just so hypnotic. <laughs> and there we go. It looks like it's all complete. So done deal there. So I'll just close the box out here and we'll press on. So here in our first steps, we have our update to begin with, but I already did that, so I don't need to hit the launcher. Uh, patented codecs, and that's another thing that came up. I think that came up on its own, unless I hit that by mistake. But don't need to do that again. These are good. Here are your proprietary drivers for NVIDIA, if you're running NVIDIA. And then here we got install more apps from the Soft Center and install web apps. Nice. I thought I remember a folder for web apps being in here before. I could be thinking of a different distro, but I really like the web apps thing. That is cool. So we're going to have to add a web app in here. And while I'm yapping here, I was just trying to <laughs> lengthen this a little bit, make it longer. There we go. That way I don't have to use the scroll bar to see all the categories. Let's look at the software center. So as you can see, it's using Discover for the Software Center, and that's pretty common for KDE. Typically, Discover seems to be the way to go, and Discover has really come a long way. I like Discover. I think it's a really nice, efficient, and non-bloated software center. Let's click on Kden Live, and I'm just going to let that install, and we'll see how the installer goes on that. And it looks like one of the latest versions of Kden Live from... December 22. So yeah, very new. Very cool. And now I switch back over to the main menu here and you can see the status still installing. So it's kind of getting up there. And while that's doing this thing, I'm going to launch this install web apps thing. That might take a second to open up because I already got this Kden Live installing. So I'm kind of taxing things a little bit, but that'll probably pop up here in a minute. And Kden Live looks like it's just about ready to come in and show us what it's got. And hopefully it worked. This is one of the things I like about Fedora-based distros because... You get new software instead of the old stuff. And I don't have to depend so much on snaps or flat packs and so forth. There's Kden Live anyway. And as you can see, looks great. The theming is perfect on it. Nice. So it looks like we got a nice successful install on there. And now let's jump over to our web apps. So this is our web app creator. And this thing is pretty handy. I like the web app creator. I'm going to put in Google Maps and well, hello there. PD came up to join me. This is PD. Actually, Peter, he's my kitty cat. <laughs> 
So, yes, I got company. All right. So where was I? Oh, yes, Google Apps. So a web app is where this web app creator is where you can take a website and then you can just kind of turn it into an app. So Google Maps is a really good example of something that's kind of a self-contained web app. And so what this is doing is this is taking your browser and using it as a GUI to run a website. But it doesn't have all the buttons and everything else on there or the navigation bar unless you choose to do so. And so in this case, I'd like to have quick access to Google Maps, something that I could just launch without having to go through it in my browser. So I just typed in the name here, Google Maps, up here under name. And then all I got to do is put in the URL of Google Maps. So I'm going to type that in right now. That would be HTTPS double colon double backslash maps.google.com. And I can type faster than I can talk. And I think that's good for an icon. So we'll leave that and everything else, the default and Firefox web browser is good to have it based on. The icon you can change if you like, but I find it best just to leave everything the way it is. And so that's all there is to it. Once you hit OK, the app's created just like that. And if you go in here, then it's located somewhere. I guess it's not under utilities. I ah, lost and found. There we go. <laughs> when all else fails, look in the lost and found. <laughs> So here we go, and we're going to take a look at this, and this should open up Google Maps. Then we can kind of look around, and there's our map. So if I scroll, you can kind of see the surrounding area, and you can go anywhere in the world you want and just explore. Like, for example, here's a nice little town, a town called Luton in the UK. <laughs> nice. And so if I go over here and just pick out a random street like Gordon Street, we could go down here for a pizza. <laughs> and I could turn, that's the wrong way for the pizza place. But if I was going to turn this way, you can kind of see all the different little stores around here. And there's the pizza place down towards the end. You can kind of see the little black sign there. So that's cool. And then you can literally just kind of, well, not literally, but you can kind of drive down Gordon Street here. And there's the pizza place. Oh, and then, oh, that wasn't the pizza place. This is the other end. So here's a food and wine shop, VS. And that turns on to Manchester, I think. And wow, <laughs> somehow I got off on the sidewalk. How would I do that? Hmm. Oh, this is kind of cool. So you got this 360 degree area here. So you could literally, like, if you were going to a town somewhere, you could put yourself in that town and just drive around before you go visit. And then you'll kind of have an idea of how to get around. <laughs> so we could just kind of cruise back down Gordon Street here. And that was the pizza shop, I think. And then there's a bunch of construction here. And if you come down here, you'll end up on another street. And here's the alleyway. So if you want to get mugged, or if you want to do the mugging, this might be a good street to case. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> so here we are at the corner, and you can see down here. And if we wanted to, we could just drive all through town. Nice. And it looks like a nice Luton day here, probably springtime. Actually, June. So this is from last June. Fairly recent. So yes, mildly entertaining. And then you can see all this stuff in the reflective glass. Very good then. So let's jump back out of here. And I'm just going to wait for a taxi while that's gone. Just kidding. And so what else we got? So let's jump in here and explore our menu a little bit. So here we have all our applications, our administrative apps here, like DNF, Dragora, Firewall, and so forth. Then under development, we already got some cool stuff in there. 
And I'm just going to open up the Nobara package manager. I think I was in here when I did the update. Yes, the Yum extender. So this is kind of like a customized package manager or Yum extender that they are using to access the Nobara repos. And so that's nice to get easy access to Nobara stuff right from there. Then here's our games. We got Steam, Proton, Up, Cute, Lutris, G Overlay. So a lot of things that are really optimized toward gaming. Unfortunately, I'm not a heavy gamer, so I don't do a lot of that. Although I do like some games. <laughs> and here we got Over Only Office. And then our system, Discover and KDE applications and so forth here. And system Monitor, Time Shift. And then under Utilities, of course, we got all these great KDE utilities, not to mention some extras. And there's our Google Maps, Update and Sync, and then Help. So you can even click on Help and get the manual there if you get a little bit lost, especially if you're new to Linux. Then we got our system settings, our Discover, Dolphin, Firefox, and Python 3 down here in the taskbar. Or not Python 3. That's what the welcome screen's based on. And here's the panel. I scooched out of the way. And here we got our notifications, our speakers, and then on the volume control, networks, our super graphics utility here. So a bunch of different choices here for hybrid, integrated, VFIO. So all these options here for your graphics, nice. And then here's our status and notifications, extra icons and so forth, like your night control center and lock keys and all that. And then you got your clock settings and your your clock and your calendar here. And then finally, we got our peek at desktop. So click and it'll peek at the desktop. Stop peeking at desktop. Yeah. Okay. Peek at desktop. But you told me to stop. Okay, I'll peek at it. Stop peeking at desktop. Nah. -uh. Peek at desktop. I don't know what to do. Every time I peek at you, tell me to stop. <sighs> stop peeking at desktop. Nah. -uh. Get me out of here. Ah. <laughs> That was tough. Had time to take a few breaths there and a little bit of relaxation. I'm back. And here's our Nobara welcome screen again. And so those are all the first steps we kind of got through. So I'm going to go to system settings here and let's see what's in there. You can also get there through the settings. And at the same time, I'm going to open up console. I'm just going to make that bigger and I'm going to do a Neo fetch because I just want to just take a look at our info here real quick. And nice logo. You can see the big N in the background there. Actually in the middle of that N it almost looks like an ostrich or a peacock or something <laughs> with his feathers out. But that's actually a big N I think. But that's kind of cool. There's two ways you can look at that I guess. And so here we have our Nobara 37, our kernel 6.0.16-301 FSync. Nice. And then our shell 5.2.15, 5.26.4 for Plasma with Kwin, Edweta, Breeze Dark for our icons. So very good. And let's just see if HTOP's installed. Nope. So let's do a top instead. And if I look in here, it looks like we got about 1,800 views there, 1 1.8. So, yeah, I guess considering all the stuff I've had open, that's kind of par for the course. If we go in here and we go into Breeze Dark, I'll just click that and just kind of make it dark. I kind of like the dark theme. It looks like it was already there, though, pretty much. And so selects item, I want to keep that for our default. That's so we double click when we change folders instead of single click in the file manager. And so Breeze Dark is our default here for our global theme. You can also use Nobara, which really looks the same as the Breeze Dark. And then our application style. So if you want to change your button style and all that, you can do that here. And then here we got our plasma style. So if you want 
different background looks and so forth. You can tweak that here and those will change certain specific areas outside of the global settings, your global things. So if you want to tweak your globals, you can do it that way. And then of course, here's our colors. And that's also located here in our welcome screen. And since I'm back in the welcome screen, if we go to look and feel, you got your get new themes and icons. So that's kind of equivalent to being back where we are now and then selecting like the get new stuff right there in the button down in the lower right corner. But I'm going to choose a different accent here. So I'm just going to go down. We could do that from current wallpaper and that would change it there. But I'm going to do something custom. So it looks like the first choice is pink. Then we got like a salmon color, orange, yellow, green, and turquoise, blue, purple, gray. And you can custom the color. I kind of like yellow. I don't think I've ever chosen yellow before. So I think I'm going to go with that. And I don't see the accent changing there over in the dolphin let me launch that again and it's still kind of blue so i was kind of thinking that was going to change yellow as well but maybe it won't could be the accent is just relevant to the menus maybe like the main menu hmm. well anyway let's leave that yellow and then when i get to icons i'll change the icons and then here's our window decoration. So here's where you can kind of tweak it. If you go here to our title bar buttons, you can slide your buttons over to the other end if you want, if you like it more Mac style. Personally, I like them on the right side. And then you can modify a bunch of other things up there as well. And then here's our icons. And I guess I forgot to hit apply. I triggered that when I moved that around. <laughs> so here's our breeze, dark, oxygen, papyrus, papyrus dark, and so forth. So these are kind of the defaults that are added in. Personally, out of these icons, I just kind of like the breeze dark, but here we can choose more. And the button was behind my head, but that was to get more. And then that puts us in online where we can choose from a bunch of stuff. And I sorted this by rating. And here we have New Way to Reborn. Those look pretty nice. So I think I can just choose something out of here. Maybe the New Way to Reborn Yellow. That'll kind of complement the yellow accent that I chose earlier. So I'm going with that. And that should download pretty quick. And I'll just hit Use. And that should change our icons in Dolphin. But Dolphin never really... Well, it did. <laughs> I was just going to say it never really dynamically updates when I change the colors or the icons, but it did. Must be something they fixed in the latest version of KDE. Nice. Onward and upward. So I'm not seeing any yellow accents in the main menu either. So I'm not really quite sure why those aren't changes. I, I might be missing something maybe, but it seems to me that those should be changing even though the global theme is set a certain way, but I seem to recall those in the past uh, changing in the menus and even on the sidebar on Dolphin. So, yeah, unless I'm remembering something wrong. Anyways, let's pop into users here, and I'm just going to choose that light bulb. That looks kind of cool. <laughs> so that's something I like to do every time I get in here is just kind of change my avatar and then we have our regional settings here. These are all really your normal settings that you go through every time I'm in KDE. So nothing new here, really. Input devices, that's one of my regular stops. I like to go in here and turn on the NumLock because I use the NumLock all the time. And then here's our mouse settings. If you're a lefty, you can check the left-handed mode box. And remember, if you check that box, and you change your mind, you got to use your right mouse button to click on it and check it again. <laughs> Display and monitor. So here's where you go if you want to change your scale and resolution and so forth.
And then I think we'll just move on down here to about. Just take a quick look at this. And pretty much we'll say what the NeoFetch did. Our cute version, 5.15, kernel 6.0.16, nice. And I think there was something I missed. Oh yeah, our workspace behavior. So I can just jump in here real quick. And one thing I always like messing with are the desktop effects. So if you like your effects, you can pop in here and just kind of look at the cool stuff, the blur. And a lot of them are already enabled, which really enhances the desktop and gives it a nice look all the way around. Uh, there's wobbly windows. That's one of my favorites. So I've got to click that. <laughs> and I'll hit apply here. And so now if I use it, Move it around, we get a slight wobble, but not too much. Usually I have to go in here and kind of adjust it because it's always at the bottom by default for some reason. Uh, so if you kind of grab it, you got to grab the button and then slide it. And I usually put it in the middle. That's kind of a good spot. It's not too springy, but not too stiff either. It's kind of just about right. <laughs> so that's wobbly windows. And... This is where all our different effects are, magic lamp, squash, and all these different things when you're minimizing and maximizing windows and closing them and so forth. So that's another stop that I'd like to go to. And I'll just kind of minimize that guy. And let's take a look at our desktop settings here. So here's where we got our different wallpapers and just kind of want to peek in here and see if anything new. It looks like all our standard KDE wallpaper there. So just kind of clear the desktop up a little bit. But they got some really nice default wallpapers. One thing I really like, KDE has some nice default wallpapers to choose from. Good backgrounds, the canoe, and there's the kite. Although I got my window in front of it. <laughs> and that's a nice painting there, safe landing and our shell. Uh, safe landing's kind of cool. I like the other painting that's in here too. Uh, this one here, the autumn. This has always been kind of one of my favorite backgrounds. I've been using this one since way back in 2018, I think, is when it first came out, if I remember right, give or take a year or so. And that's one I've had as a background many times. Then here we got our icon arrangements. You can see by default, there's no icons in the desktop, very clean. So a lot of people will like that, but the icons are there to put on. So anything you wanna drag onto the desktop, you can easily have icons here for your desktop, or you can keep it clean. So they give you the choice. And so there we go. I'll bring up my dolphin here. Stick it on my home folder so it looks better and just kind of reshape it. So now there's this one more thing I think I want to cover here, maybe a couple. If I go down here, here's our, by default, I'm going to select here, show alternatives because by default we have our standard application launcher. But if you want something to look more like Windows 7, you can do the bottom or this tops choice here is a dashboard and this is kind of more full screen kind of gnome like but in my opinion better <laughs> and you got your categories over here so you can just hover through your categories and see all the different items this way and to me that's a really nice layout and you can even look at all your widgets right in the same area i think that is really fantastic that's kind of my favorite launcher personally and speaking of widgets, I'm just going to right click here and open up my widgets window here because this is the other way you can get to them. And then I'm just going to add in weather here and we'll just kind of drag that down into the taskbar here. Mainly wanted to do that just to show you how to drag a widget over. <laughs> so there we go. And I could actually click on that and just put a location in there and it'll detect it automatically and choose it or you can type it in, I believe. And then there you go. We got a full moon today. Nice. So I think that about covers everything. So Nabara continues to be my favorite Fedora-based distro. 
this is a wonderful distro. And even though I'm not a gamer or have an NVIDIA based card, this might be something you might want to look into as a possible distro to use if you're interested in gaming on Linux. But if you don't need it for gaming on Linux like me, I find this to be a wonderful, maybe almost ideal distro here optimizing the kernel for graphics and graphics acceleration. And that's something I've kind of noticed when I've made videos, because I've actually made videos in Navarra and running Caden live and rendering my videos all seem to be a little bit better, the performance in Nobara. And I really have nothing to base that on other than my own observations. So I didn't take any benchmarks or anything that I could cite related to speed and so forth, but it just felt smoother overall. And whether that's because of the custom configuration or because we're using Wayland or what, I can't tell you for sure, but I have a feeling it's probably a combination of both. They have filling in all the holes for Fedora because Fedora actually has poked a few more holes in their distro by not having uh, certain GPU features and codecs and so forth available by default. And so that kind of, yeah, kind of makes you have to do some extra work when you install it. <laughs> so that's kind of the downside with the fresh Fedora. If you're really familiar with Fedora and you know how to, you know your way around it and all that and you know the routine of putting in the RPM fusion repos and if you're kind of a power user, then it's no big deal. But if you're somebody that's kind of new to Linux and you want to hook someone up with an RPM based distro, Nubara is really probably the choice I would go with because it's really just all set up, ready to go. It's one of those plug and play things where you plug it in, you install it and it just works. And that's, probably one of the biggest things I can say about Nobara. And since I discovered this, I never really looked back. It's really kind of my number one alternate distro. Whereas I've always been kind of an arch user because of the need for the AUR. But even that is not so much an issue anymore. Now that I discovered DistroBox, which I had talked about in a previous video not too long ago. And DistroBox has really been kind of a game changer for me as far as uh, running other distros and having access to the AUR. So I really like that. To me, that is really cool. And I'm just babbling now, but I hope all this was helpful. And I hope you enjoyed the little peek at Nubara 37. I think this is really a great upgrade. It looks like the Nobara guy, and I forgot his name, sorry, but it looks like he really does his homework. He really knows his stuff. Uh, he is a former Red Hat engineer. I think he knows what he's doing. <laughs> and this distro is a testament to that. So if you haven't tried it, you're really missing out. Go grab a copy and give it a whirl. And with that, I hope this review was helpful. And if it was, don't forget to leave that thumbs up and hit subscribe. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.